Welcome to section one, installation and setup. In this lecture, we're only going to be talking about how to install the software that we need for the rest of this course. And in the second lecture, we'll look at the configuration and setup. I'll go through all the software you need and how to get it and how to install it. We need the Go tools because we're doing Go language programming, of course. We need a code editor to write code and I'll be using Visual Studio Code Editor. I'll show you how to install and configure Visual Studio Code Editor. But if you are already competent with another code editor or some text editor that you would like to use, you do not have to switch. There are many editors out there, so feel free to use the one that align with your style of work. Optionally, you may install a version control staff software. Version control software allows you to manage the development and changes in your code. And I'll be using Git to manage the code that I develop. And you can get a copy of the code if you have Git installed. Don't worry, you can still get a copy of the code for this lecture. Even if you don't install Git, you can simply download it. And I will show that too. Let's get to the installation. So the first thing we want to install are the Go tools. That's the most important thing that we really need. You can get this at the download site by going to golang.org, which is the website for the Go programming language, and then going to download or clicking the download link. Once you get there, follow the installation instruction for your particular OS. For example, I am on a Mac, so I'll show you my installation process, but be aware that it might vary slightly for your particular in installation. One other tip, if you're not too comfortable making changes on your system, the best thing to do is to accept the defaults. So this is what it looked the installation process looked like for me on the Mac. I have already navigated to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash golang.org forward slash download. But it doesn't matter if you just hit the golang website and then you can just click on download here. It takes you to the exact same page. Oh, here you have the download links for you know Microsoft OS. Apple and Linux, and then you have the source code. Remember I said Go is open source, so there's a source right there. You could download it, compile it if you like. If you have some more exotic hardware combination, well then you might want to scroll down to other ports and check those out. But either way, once you get the appropriate version, just click on it, have it download to your system, save the file, and then execute the installation of that file. So. I already have it installed, so that's all they're mentioning that I have a previous installation, but let's go through it anyway. Now, on my system, I have to give permission to install this, so I need an admin account. And I wait for the installation. If you're on Windows, it might ask you if you want to add Go to your path. Again, do accept that because you would like to be able to run the Go command from the command line, and if it's not in your path, you're not going to be able to do that. For Mac, I know it automatically does it, so we don't really need to be prompted for that. And it's asking me to remove it, that's up to you, but that is all that's required to install Go. So now that I have installed Go, I can verify that Go is installed by either going through, clicking on this link and going through the test your installation. And this basically walks you through creating a simple program and how to build it. The other thing you can do is just go to your terminal and you can type go and for example env and enter and you should see something like this or you can type you know just go alone and you'll see something like this so this tells me that go is in my path and it's ready for use like i said we need a code editor and i'll be using visual studio code i like it because i think it's simple and fairly easy to use it has great support for go programming and it's available um, here at this link, or you can simply search for VS Code Download. Now, let me show you what the installation process for that looks like. Here I am on my Visual Studio Code download site, and you can see the first thing they present you with is all the download options for the different operating system. I'm on the Mac, so I'll click this, and it will offer me the opportunity to save it. One of the other things you can do is once you have Visual Studio install if this is the first time you're using it i would suggest you click on introductory video and look at the first four videos and don't worry about actually installing any extension and notice these videos are at most five minutes long and so it's just to give you an idea of what it's like to use the editor and we're going to talk about which 
um, extensions to install or plugins to install in the next lecture when we talk about configuration. So I don't actually want you to install anything, but I just want you to have an idea how it works. But in terms of the installation though, let's go find our, our download file. And so here it is, it's a zip file. And for me, that means just simply expanding it. So I should be able to double click on that and that should expand. And then I'll drag and drop it into my applications directory. So if you're on Windows, it might mean putting it in some other directory or there might be an installation that puts it in a different place. But for me, this works. And so I can just say authenticate and I can put it in place. And that's all there is to install in Visual Studio Code. And now I can get rid of this downloaded file. So the other optional install is a version control tool. There are many other version control tools out there. I'll show you how to install Git. A version control tool is really to help you with code management and the evolution of your software. If you're going to be a software developer and you haven't been using any version control, I strongly recommend that you install one and at least get comfortable with it. Git is available for free download at git-scm.com. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash git-scm.com. Accept the default, but then when it asks you if you want to install a bash shell, you might want to do that just because you're going to see me run command from a shell that looks like a bash shell. And if you have a similar shell, it might just make it easier for you to follow up. Otherwise, you have to adopt those commands to run in your Windows command prompt. So let me show you what that process looks like when I install it from my operating system. So as you can see, Git is free and open source, just like Go. And so you can click on the download link. If you scroll down here, you can see it detects my operating system type and it's offering me a download for Mac. But if you need to download a specific version, you can just scroll down a little bit and get that from here. And so I click download and it's going to save it to my system. So if you like me and it didn't start downloading automatically, just click on this button and then it's going to go here. You're going to see this little timeout occurring. And then eventually it's going to pop up the save button. And so I save it to my system and there it is. Now I have notification that it's finished downloading. Now I can go to the download directory. There it is. And this is giving me a package to install and I can go through the process of the installation. Now for Mac, there's an issue there just now that you saw with it trying to install. When I do this, it's saying that though, basically it doesn't trust wherever I'm getting this from. So hold your hold on your alternate key, right click on package and then say open. And now when it open, you get this other option where you can say open. And then now it's giving me the opportunity to authenticate and install it. And it's installed and that's it. So in the next lecture, I'll go through how to get the code and how to set up your Visual Studio Code Editor. So until then, take care. See you in the next lecture. Welcome to lecture two in section one. In this lecture, we'll go through what is it you need to do to configure and set up the tools that we install in the previous lecture so that in the next section, we can start writing code. For this lecture, we're going to be talking about Go artifacts. So those are going to be your Go source file packages and executable, and we'll talk about how you get those. So don't worry. We'll also talk about code organization. And this is important because even though things have changed from how Go used to um, expect and store your source code and packages and binaries, we now have Go module, which is a lot better and give us a lot of flexibility. We'll also talk about setting up your code directory. Next, we'll look at how to configure Visual Studio Code. Optionally, if you install Git, we'll talk about configuring Git. Let's talk about Go artifacts. In Go, you write Go source code and those get compiled into binaries. Remember what I said in the course overview? That Go is a compile language. So when you write source code, you feed it to a compiler and a compiler produces a binary. Your source code could be turned into an executable binary, which is a program or a command that you can run, or it could be turned into a package. So you can write some Go source code that when compiled gets to become a package. And Go knows how to do this and you don't have to worry about it. And we're going to talk more about this when we look at how to create our own packages. Once you have a package or somebody else has created a package, you can reuse that package again in your executables. So packages act as a nice way of not only having reusable code, but also as a way of organization. When talking about code organization, we can talk about how do we group 
set of Go files. So in Go, a package contains one or more Go files. Now note that every Go source file must be in a package and it cannot be in two packages. The same source file must be in one packet. So packages are used both for sharing code and also as a way to modularize large projects. A typical Go project or application or even a package, because remember, once you write code, you can either get an application out of it, which is an executable, or you can make it into a package, is developed in module. So a module can represent an application or a module can represent a package. So you can say, I have a module and it represents a package, or this module contains many packages, or this module contains many applications. That's why I said this idea of a module is very, very flexible. Let's say I'm writing an application and my application uses some package for a database. Now, the author of that database calls its package for the database version one. And then he releases a newer version, version two. But I am only interested in using version one because version two breaks my application. The way I can make sure that my Go application still uses version one is to create a module. So that's what module gives you. It gives you the ability to version control the packages that are used in your code. So let's take a look at a diagram. So let's say we have a project that we want to work on and we can break this project up into several features. Now, these features can be a package. There's no reason why we can't develop a feature as a package. And the way I break up my application in terms of understanding it, I can also mirror this with a directory structure. So the two things can go together, right? But notice like feature three can be broken down into sub features. And again, that can be sub packages or sub directory. So what is really inside of a package is just files. Every Go source file belongs to exactly one package. So within each of our package directory, we just have files. So what is a module then? Well, let's take our project. If we use that blue box to represent a module, we can say that our project is a module. And the module there controls which versions of packages that we're allowed to use in our project. So if we're pulling in packages, external packages in any one of our feature directories, it will be controlled. The version of those packages we're pulling in will be controlled by that module file that is in our project parents directory. Okay. So again, remember I said that oh, we can use directories to mirror the structure of our program. So we will have a directory to represent our project. And within that directory, we will have some directories to represent our different feature packages and so on. And so if we have a module file, which we haven't seen yet, but if we have a module files to say that our, our project is a module, then all the code that's inside of this project will be controlled or version according to the rules in our module file. Because modules are so flexible, we can choose that feature three should have its own version in rule. And so we can put a module file there also. And that means the rules and feature three gets applied to all the files in feature three that are imported in feature three and the children packages of feature three. So that's how flexible modules are. The documentation for modules, you can find it online or because we have the Go tools installed, you can find it on the command line by typing go space help space modules. To bring this home and make it a little bit more concrete, let's look at the Golang for Taurus module. So the code that I provide for this course is provided as a module. There's a directory called Golang for Taurus and I have a module file in that directory. It means then that any code within any of those subdirectories that needs to use some external package, well, they're going to pull in the version dictated by my module file. So that blue box there represent my module file, and it's going to say which version of packages are allowed to be used in this module. When we clone the code for this course, you're going to see a module file, or if you want to create your own directory, then you can create a module file also. And I recommend that you use module. In terms of where you're going to put your source code, the source code can be placed anywhere on your file system. You can put it in existing subdirectory or in your home directory. It doesn't matter, but we just want a directory where we can put the source code. Now, typically you'd want to have a directory into which you create several modules. 
I just showed you, for example, that the code for this course is a module. So you can imagine this is Golang for tourists. If you had source for Golang for adventurers or something else, then that would be in yet a different directory. But the two directories can be within a parent directory. And so we can call that your ghost source directory if you like. Besides having your ghost source directory, this is go bin directory. And what it is, is really where go store binaries. So remember I said that if you have ghost source, you can compile them into packages or executables. Well, those executables, they go into the go bin directory. And this is something that bin directory is really what Unix uses to store executable. And so by having a go bin directory, you can add it to your existing path. And so that when you install applications, it's available for you to be run on the command line. Those applications get installed either when you do go get or you do go install. We'll cover all of this in section two. You don't have to worry about it. But for now, this is just information as to why we're going to be doing certain things during the setup. In terms of setting up your go bin directory and your pad variable, let's assume that your go bin variable is assigned the home directory slash go slash bin. So for Mac and Linux user, it's very easy. You can set this in your login shell. For Windows users, you can use the Windows way of setting an environmental variable because Windows does not have a shell like Linux slash Mac users have. But if you install git and you install bash, then you can easily type this command at your bash command line and it will set your go bin directory to this value. If you did not install Git, then you have to look up how to set environmental variables in Windows. Now, once you have your Go bin set up, but in order to run that executable that you might have installed, we want to update your pad variable. Your pad variable is what your operating system uses to find executables. So we want to add to your pad variable the Go bin directory. This is how you would do it. And for Windows users, you can just execute this command and it should update your bash rc if you install git. Now that we've talked what we want to accomplish, let's talk about your source directory. Where should it be? Well, again, I said it can be anywhere on your operating system. If you install git, you can simply clone the code from GitHub. If not, if you want to develop things from scratch, you can simply make a directory and then you can create that go module file with this content, which is just module and the module name. Now note, it doesn't matter if you're actually using Git or even if you have a GitHub repository. Here I am at the GitHub site for our project, which is Straversity slash Golang for Taurus. If I copy this, or rather I can come down here to clone and I can say copy this by clicking this, or I can say download a zip file. So if you did not install git and you want this code you can just simply click download so i click download and it gives me an option to save it so i can save it the other thing i can do is if i have git install i can simply clone it so i can say git clone and then this is the path and if i just enter you can see it says cloning into golang for taurus so this means that i now have a directory called golang for taurus and that's the code. Notice this file. This is our file that describe our module. And if I cat it, all it has is module at Golang for towards traversity.com. But you do not need a GitHub report to have this. If you're going to make a module, you simply must have this file. So that's one way of getting the code by cloning it. And that's if you install Git. So let me remove this. For those of you who did not install Git, if you downloaded the code, you might be able to just simply extract it. And for me, I have uh, unzip on my system. So I'll do unzip and I have it downloaded in here and it's Golang for Taurus and master.zip, that is the file name it downloaded as. And so if I run it, it's gonna unzip it into this directory called git Golang for Taurus dash master. So I'm gonna rename it to Golang for Taurus that go length for doors. And so now this is my directory. And again, I can go into it. Uh, I can go into this directory and there is my file. If I do cat, there it is. Now, 
what I would recommend you do is you modify this file to have your name instead. So I recommend that you do this instead. Um, you go and we, I'll show you another way of modifying this file. So you don't have to use Vim, but I'll show you later how we can use Visual Studio Code. So since we have Visual Studio Code installed, we can simply say code, go that module, and it will open Visual Studio Code ready to modify this file and we can change it that way. So I've already changed it. That's why it shows up this way. So I'll quit Visual Studio Code and come back, come back to the command line. Now, now you've seen two ways. We've cloned it, we've downloaded it. But what if you want to develop all the code from scratch and you don't care to clone it or download it? Well, you simply make a directory called Golang for Tours, or, and again, this is anywhere you want to store your code. This is just an example. So you make a directory, Golang for Tours, go into that directory. What you should do is create a module. To create a module, remember I said the help for Go module is Go Help Modules. And then it shows you everything you need to know about modules. But if you just simply want to make a module, you can say Go Mod. And you can see the sub command for go mud. The one we're interested in is in it. So if we type go mud in it, it requires a module name. And so to give it a module name, we can say github.com forward slash another forward slash go lang for tours. Now remember, you do not have to have a account with this name at GitHub or anything. You can use any repository name you like. So if you have your own repository or something, you can just simply use that. You, or you can just simply say Golang for Taurus if you like. Or you can say another slash GFM Golang for Taurus, right? So anything you want to use. And notice that's creating that module file. And there you go. Exactly what you pass as the module name is what it used to create a file with just simply module and followed by that name. We can remove this because it's just a text file. And so we can remove this file once again. Remember, we have an empty directory now. And so if I do three, three, there's an empty directory. So I can create this myself. Again, I'll do it with code, Visual Studio Code, that code.mod and enter. And then now I have an empty file. I can say module and let's say GitHub that comes slash another slash colang for Taurus. So that's the name I want to use, for example. I save this file and I quit Visual Studio Code. That's how you prepare your code directory anywhere you want to place it, up to you. So now that we know how to start Visual Studio Code, let's start it and install those extensions that we need for Go coding. Run the co code command to start Visual Studio Code. And if we enter, it just starts up and it's available. It opens the last file we were working on. But another way we can start Visual Studio Code, and what we want to do most of the time, is come into our code directory and start it with code that, and put a dot to mean the current directory. Now we do not have anything other than our module file in this current directory. Let me go back and clone our code because I want to show you a few plugins that we're going to install. So I'm going to re remove this directory. Remember, there's an empty directory that I have. And I'm going to do git clone instead. And so I'll clone the code. And now I'll type go, go length for Taurus. I can do that like that. That works too. And now it opens our Visual Studio code with all, showing all the sections and everything. Let's talk about the extension. So Visual Studio code manages the extension by this little icon here is how you open the extension manager. And you can install any number of extensions. What you can do is search for extensions. Now the extension we want to install is this Go one. And so you can search for it or wait for it. There's another way. If I click here and I open section two and in lecture one, you'll see I have a main.go file. If I click on this file or I created a Go file, it will offer to install this extension for me. And so you simply click install. So there's yet another way of getting it installed. And so now I can do reload. Now, now that's installed, you will see it says that, oh, do you want to install a language server? And it also tells you how some Go analysis tool is missing. So I would say just click on install all. And so when you do that, you will see on the output screen, it lists a few 
extra tools that it needs to install. Once this says that it's finished installing everything, like it says right now, you can quit this and you don't even have to restart Go. If you install Git, Git needs a config file. And basically the config file just basically tells it what's your name, who you are, and your email address. And you can run these two commands to set both of those things. You can, of course, open the config file and do it, or you can just simply run these commands and confirm that it created the config file for you. So that's all you need for the Git configuration. That's it. Really, we didn't have a whole lot to set up, but I did a lot of explanation, so it made it very long. Take care. See you in the next lecture. The next lecture is going to be lecture one of section two. And that's when we're actually going to get our hands dirty and start writing Go code. So good luck. Bye.